Here's something you want to really pay attention to. Your, your ID may be public knowledge and could be used by identity thieves who want to access your address, personal contact information and even your credit details. That's after a huge trove of data was discovered on the internet which seems to contain the personal records of more than 30 million South Africans and uh, reportedly including the President and the uh, Finance Minister. An information security researcher Troy Hunt raised the alarm yesterday yesterday after finding the data floating on the net and a guest on the show said that the data pointed to real estate agency Jigsaw Holdings. Well, Jigsaw Holdings admitted to being the unwitting source of the data today and a subsidiary of it, uh, AIDA, a state agency, said that it had no idea how the information was released uh, more widely. Uh, to discuss this, uh, we're now joined by the Executive Director of the South African Fraud Prevention Services, Mani van Skalpek. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, uh, Peter. So let's start with you. What, what, what is Fraud Prevention Services? What are you trying to do? We're a, we're a non-profit organization which was started 15 years ago. Um, and the, the main course of a business is to uh, serve as a platform for banks and credit providers and other members uh, to share uh, information on consumers who defraud them. So, so it's proven fraud. Um, what we realized afterwards is that there's also a need for consumers um, who have become victims of fraud um, and also have maybe lost their IDs or the IDs have been compromised. Um, and need some extra protection. And that service is a free of charge service to consumers. All right, so we've got 31 plus million um, documents or, or, or uh, bits of data that have gone out. What's the immediate threat and what does one do? Yeah. I think the, the normal uh, question is to say what now? Mm. Um, and people, uh, what will happen? I think people steal other people's IDs um, to open accounts and to trade in, in a name uh, where they can benefit from and not going to pay the account. So uh, th that is the main use of, of identity theft. Um, my advice to people would be to say, number one, assume that you're on the list. I, I think that to me is very mm. important. Um, you mentioned 30 million, I saw figures 47 million, and a bit later this afternoon, 60 million, um, uh, which includes some deceased um, IDs in there. Um, the, the point is, do not necessarily go and check if you are on a list. Um, and my concern is, although this website mm. that has been named in the media could be a legitimate website, but there could be other websites which open up to say, come and check if your information is here, and you could unwillingly or unknowingly provide legitimate information to illegitimate sources. Okay, so you, you're part of another hack, actually. Yeah, j just, just assume mm. that if we take 30 million or 60 million, just assume that you are on the list. Um, okay, then what? So, so, so then, then at least, as mm. with, with, uh, uh, then what? Um, my, my advice is to contact the credit bureau um, and look for suspicious data. There are inquiry details. If you realize that people are inquiring on your name, which you haven't applied for credit, mm. Then that is suspicious. Um, if accounts are getting opened in your name, that is suspicious. If people starting to phone you to say you have opened this account and you haven't paid us, that is suspicious. Mm. So, so the moment you see suspicious information, please contact us at the SAFPS, free of charge, of course, and we would list you on a database through a process, mm. list you on a database which will provide you with additional protection. So, so what does this additional protection do then? Well, what, what it does is if the moment you are listed on that database and you apply uh, for credit or, or the fraudster applies for credit, um, the credit provider or the bank will be notified to say this ID is suspicious. It has been uh, compromised in, in, in some way or form. Ask for additional verification. So the bank will then ask you as a consumer, because they wouldn't know whether you're a consumer right, or a perpetrator, right, right. Um, for additional uh, verification to make sure that they are dealing with the correct person. Um, so, so that is the reason why. Mm. Why are we adding another step to say go to the credit bureaus? My main concern is if we've got 30 or 40 million people trying to contact us, um, it will flood everything and the process will come to a standstill. So I, we worked on a, uh, the, the four main credit or five main credit bureaus, go and uh, contact them and make mm. sure, get your credit bureau report and monitor that. 
and uh, you're, you're entitled at least one, two, yes, that's three right. access to, yes, to you, credit information. Yes, you've got three uh, access to one free credit report um, a year. Um, and then after that, I'm not too sure mm. what the price is, but it's not a, si a significant amount. All right. So, I mean, this is huge. They say this is the largest uh, violation of the Poppy Act uh, known to us. Um, but you're dealing with these kinds of things over and over again. So whilst we might be drawn to this particular story and this event, we haven't been aware of what else has been going on. What is mm. the typical vulnerability that, that we have, that you've seen over time? Well, I think uh, it's typical that the cybercrime is an issue for us, mm. um, and we see it in all spheres. I, I usually have a couple of tips that I give to consumers, and they, they might be so, uh, sounding uh, uh, you know, childish, but they, they, they really work. As I say, treat your identity document like you would treat cash. Mm. Um, you would not give it to anybody. You would not just lie it around. You would really protect it. Um, so take your own responsibility there. The second one, I say, go and shred the documents. D don't throw it away. If you have to burn it, burn it. But um, you can't just throw it away. People sit there and they will go through the documents and try to form a profile about you. Mm. Um, if you get uh, links to say, please update the information or your bank wants to get more information from you, please, mm. if you haven't initiated the, the response, do not respond mm. to it at all. How much of an increase have you noticed in cybercrime? Well, in, 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 in fraud specifically, yeah. uh, we, w without breaking it down, we have seen this year to date uh, it's a 52% increase wow. um, in reported fraud. Um, we saw an increase of 30% uh, in victims and up to 80% mm -hmm. of people who report uh, re request protected mm -hmm. registration from us. I've received phone calls in the past from some guy who says that uh, they are, he's got a Chinese accent or something and says, I'm a, a, a Microsoft technician, um, are you logged on? Yeah. How do they get access to, to A, I suppose yeah. the phone, my phone number, and then also they must then have a process of getting into my computer and I'm enabling them unwittingly. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think if you receive any of those calls, mm. you need to just put the phone down. How they get the information, mm. um, there are various ways to, to get it. And, you know, we all, as database managers, want to believe that our data is secure um, and that the IT processes mm. is, is correct. But the hackers are clever, and we need to not underestimate that. All right. So will Poppy save us, Poppy? Well, I, I hope so. And I think the regulator will start off with the bang with a significant task. Um, and I wish her well. All right. OK. So in the aftermath of this, Credit Bureau is your first port of call. Thank you very much indeed, Dimani Fenskalkwek, for, for joining us.